For those that don't know or are new here, this is an ongoing series that I've been doing called Learn Siri Shortcuts. I believe this is the sixth video, plus I had a few other kind of videos in there talking about shortcuts as well. I'll be sure to link the playlist to all those videos down below if you're curious about learning more about Siri Shortcuts. So I've gotten a lot of requests to kind of cover the fundamentals of shortcuts again. I know it's a really heavy application to get a hold of and there's a lot going on in here. So I figured I'd make a whole video about going back to the basics. Plus there was an update to shortcuts not too long ago it was shortcuts 2.1 and there was a few things added in there. So I think it might be a good idea to kind of cover a few of the very basic things. The very first shortcut we're gonna build here is using the new timers action. This came in shortcuts 2.1. And basically what we can do now is set a timer with shortcuts. Now, unfortunately, we can only set one timer at a time. There is no multiple timer support yet. Hopefully that is coming soon. But we're gonna do a couple of things with this. We're gonna use the menu option, we're gonna use the timers action, and we're also gonna use magic variables. And I will cover variables again because I know it's kind of a very confusing topic. Um, it's a very programmer thing and it's it, it takes a minute to kind of get a grips on. So let's get started. So like I said, the very first thing we're gonna do is we want the menu action. And the best way to do it is come up to this bar up here and just start typing in what you want and just to search for it. Searching for pretty much any action will yield some sort of result. And it's, it's a very handy, it's how I navigate through the application very quickly. As you can see, you can you get a couple of options here. So you get the prompt and you can have it ask a question. So we'll just say timer, question mark, great. Um, then you can see these options right here where it says one, two, and then there's these lines right here that show one, one and two. With the menu, what happens is when you run this, it's gonna prompt you for what action you want. So if I did one, it would go to one. If I did two, it would go to two. Then it would run the actions that are underneath that block. So we're gonna rename this here. So we're gonna rename these laundry timer. Then we're gonna name it to work timer. And then we're gonna hit that green button and add one. And then we're gonna name a break timer. So those are the three common ones I use. You can name them anything you want. These are just the really common ones that I use. Then we're gonna come back up here to search again. And we're gonna do start timer. And we're gonna just grab some timer applications. The unfortunate thing is your results go away after you grab an action when you search and then you grab something and move it down there. The, the search goes away. I really wish it didn't do that, but I kind of understand why it doesn't. Okay, so for the timer actions, we're just gonna fill in for how long we want the timer to be. For laundry timer, 60 minutes is about average for a load of laundry for me. Uh, work timer, I like to work for about 30 minutes, so we just put in 30. And then a break timer, I like to take a 10 minute break. So if we were to run this, it would start a timer for 10 minutes. So let's hit this, break timer. So we can open up the clock app here and go to timers and you can see right there it is running a 10 minute timer i'm going to go ahead and stop that right now that's a pretty simple shortcut right there we just made a menu put a couple of actions set some specific times for those actions named the menu so when you hit the start button it brings it up pretty simple but what if we wanted it to ask for a timer now i know we could just ask siri to hey set a timer for x amount of time but for the idea of just kind of learning let's forget about that maybe in the shortcut we wanted to do a whole bunch of other things like turn on lights or play some music or get an rss link or call somebody or whatever and then we would want it to also ask how long do you want to set a timer for so what we can do is we can add another area we're gonna call this one custom timer. And then we will come over here and type in timer again, start timer. So we got custom timer right here. So what we could do is do ask for input, type in for the question, how long? So how long do we want the time to run? Set to number and then come down here to where it says minutes and then we could hit this wand button down in the bottom left corner. And this brings up all the options we can use as variables. So now a variable is an action that we are calling. We are basically saying this action happened previously, but we now want this, to ha this action to happen within this current action. So we want to ask for input how much time we want our timer to be. So if I hit this button right here, ask for input, it means this block right here, this ask for input block, 
will then affect this start timer because the amount of time that we put in for this ask for input will now be the duration for that timer. So we could run this and do custom timer and type in the number 60. But I'm gonna hit cancel because there's actually a better way to do this. So I'm gonna delete this ask for input. Shortcuts has these variables and stuff that are kind of built in. So you can see these green bubbles down at the bottom. There's ask when run, clipboard, and shortcut input. Shortcut input will take any data that's passed to the shortcut. So if you run it from the share sheet, clipboard will take anything that you've copied and then pass that data through. But we're gonna use this ask when run action right here. So we're just gonna put that right there. So instead of needing an ask for input option, we just get this ask when run. So now if we run this, do custom, See how it brings up the action that says start timer. It gives us minutes. It prompts for the duration. I'll just type in 80 and then it starts. Now we can come back over here to clock and you can see we have an hour and 20 minute timer going. So that's pretty cool. So now you can kind of come through here. You can see we have a choose from menu. It will give us the menu options we can pick from. And then the custom timer doesn't have an integer, a number. It has an ask when run, which means when we run it, it'll ask us for how long we want the timer to be. So that is that is a variable, that is a built-in variable in shortcuts. And I will make sure I have all the shortcuts I talk about in this video in the description below. So this next shortcut I wanna show you guys is about passing information through the share sheet to shortcuts. What the whole goal of this shortcut is going to be is it's going to be to take information from a website, just a paragraph or two paragraphs, format it, then take the URL for that website, put it all together, and add it to a note we already have created in the notes document, just the stock notes document, no crazy third-party apps this time. So let's start by getting the text action. Now the text action is pretty simple and it's pretty great. Basically it just allows you to put text together, format it nice and neat, and then pass it on to the next action. This is a huge, very handy action to get to know. So let's go ahead and format some stuff. So we're gonna come in here and I'm gonna just hit enter right off the bat. So what that'll do is every time we run this, it'll add a whole space, a whole line uh, in between the stuff we add into this note. It'll make more sense in a bit, I promise. Then I'm gonna hit asterisk and then I'm gonna hit shortcut input. So the asterisk will just kind of be to kind of format things nice and neat so we can kind of see where a uh, note begins and then you know where it ends and where the next one begins. Now I'm gonna tap on the shortcuts input and you get this menu down here. Now we want text which is selected. We want the text that we're, we're going to highlight to pass through. But I just kind of wanted to show you guys there's all these other options in here. You can do file size, you can do name. So if it's like a file, you can get the file name or the file extension, you can get the creation date, all sorts of different stuff. We just want the text so I'm gonna hit done. We're not gonna worry about the rest of that this time. Then I'm gonna hit enter. I'm gonna tab over and I'm gonna type URL colon space. Um, I'm kind of a formatting stickler and that's kind of how I like to have it formatted. If you like to have it formatted different, you can type it any way you want. But we're gonna hit the shortcut input again. Now if we were to run this right now, highlighting some text on the web page, run this, we would get the highlighted text twice. That's really not what we want. We could always just get URL from input, which is another action right, built right into shortcuts. That's not the best solution. There's actually something that can make this a lot simpler. So let's tap on that shortcuts input. And you remember me showing you guys this menu, um, but there's this blue button right here that says as text with the arrow. Let's tap that. This right here is all the other options you can do. This is all the stuff you can pull from uh, inputs. You can pour articles, booleans, which is a programming term, dictionary, files, images, media, PDFs, places, rich text, URL, there's so much there. We want URL, so we're just gonna tap URL. So now what'll happen is the input the stuff that we're getting, the input, we're going to get the URL there. And it's gonna be formatted like this, which is incredibly handy. Now, we still need it to add it to the notes document. And this is pretty straightforward. So we're gonna type in create note up here and just drag that down there. So this is a pretty easy, straightforward, simple shortcut. And it's, it's gonna be pretty handy too, um, but it's just two actions. And a lot of great, easy to use, but super helpful shortcuts are two, three, maybe just four actions. They're pretty straightforward. I even have some shortcuts that are one action. So I'm gonna come up here to the control option 
Now, I already turned off the show and widget and turned on show and share sheet. This means um, we want it to only show up in the share sheet. We don't want it to show up in the widget because this shortcut actually won't be useful in the today widget. I also named it already. You can text input to note. You can change the icon. You can do whatever you want. But I'm going to go ahead and just hit done. Now let's go over to Safari. Now this is my friend Jeff Perry's website. He's doing a series on GTD right now, and I'm really interested in it. Um, this paragraph right here really stands out to me, so I'm gonna highlight this whole paragraph right here. And instead of hitting copy or anything like that, I'm just gonna come up here to the share sheet, which is this button up here in the top right, the square with the arrow coming out of it. We're gonna run shortcut, and then scroll to the bottom. We have our text input to note option. You can kind of see it formats it. We have the paragraph, we have the URL where we got it from. Then you can choose the note. I have a note already um, under personal. I have a research note right here. You can create a new note though if you don't already have one. I'm gonna hit save. And then let's come into the notes option right here. You can see right there, it just added the text. So I already had a paragraph in here uh, that I was just playing around with just so you can kind of see how it was all formatted. But there you go. Now there's a new paragraph right there. URL's good to go. You could have this go to Bear, Evernote, whatever note-taking app you want, whatever text editor app you want. You could have it go anywhere you want. I figured I'd show you guys notes because it's built into the system right then and there. I really like being able to pass data through shortcuts. I use this all the time for like sharing videos and doing link posts and all that crazy stuff. It's really handy to kind of get to know and play around with. It's definitely one of the more interesting things in shortcuts and one of the ones that you have to play around with a lot more in order to get a hang of it but I definitely recommend doing it. I really want to hear from you guys and what else you want to learn about shortcuts. I know it's kind of a really big topic and it was definitely one of the biggest features in iOS 12. This is kind of the basics. Um, I hope though, if you already knew some stuff about shortcuts, you learned some stuff. Seriously guys, let me know what you guys want to know. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great day.